Holy shit, A30 on the dot, baby. Let's go. This is going to be a, uh, a sign of things to come here. It's Tuesday night. You know what that means. It's the Hockey Happy Hour coming at you on A2D Radio, where you can only get the Hockey Happy Hour, baby. Lots Got a bit to talk about tonight. We were talking a little Morgan Frost, uh, his future with the Flyers, and what's taking so long with his contract. We also got a lot to talk about as far as free agency. We're going to have a little bit of fun in the third segment when we do around the league. Um, we're going to predict some free agents free agents of where they're going to go so you know come join along get in the chat we're going to have a lot of conversation tonight so hit that like hit that subscribe you guys know to hit that share as well let's go talk some hockey oh my god oh my god Oh, come in. It's almost time. It's happy hour on A2D Radio, and we are powered by the doc. That is Dr. Paul Vidal at Specialized Physical Therapy, LLC, with two locations in Burlington and Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Check out our doc. Make them your specialized physical therapy.com. Matt Sinsuti, while he's still off this week as he makes his way back from a birthday bender. (laughs) But we do have Brian Daly and Brad Ryer, as always, on the top line, centered by yours truly, Rob Povia. Tonight on the show, we're continuing to follow this mass flurry of moves going on in the NHL as teams get ready and prepare themselves for camps, which are opening about a month away. So... We're also discussing the Flyers offseason in particular, which has been surprisingly a busy one. Did you expect that? Well, we'll get into it. But first, we want to know, what would be your contract offer for Morgan Frost? Tonight's poll is brought to you by Boagio's Bread, located in Mount Laurel, New Jersey, home of the best stuffed breads, tomato pie, sandwiches, cutlets, and meatballs. Everything your Italian heart desires. Boagio's Bread, mention HD Radio, 10% off. Your in-store purchase and the poll is Morgan Frost will sign a lucrative contract with the Flyers. Agree or disagree? I'm going to turn it over to you, Brian. What say you? Oh well, I think it's going to be. I'm I'm on the fence with this. I was on the fence with this when I created this too, and I still don't know where I fully stand um, because this is this situation that I didn't think the Flyers were going to get to um, because I'm not sure, a hundred percent sure. I think he may be an arbitration or he may not. I don't know. Hopefully somebody out there can tell me, I know the bunch of players just went to arbitration, but um, I was hoping he was going to be signed by now. Um, So with, with that being said, part of me thinks he's going to be somewhere in the middle. I don't think it's going to quite be lucrative, but it's not going to be a bridge deal. I think he's going to sign a semi long-term deal. I think it's going to be about three or four years uh, for Morgan. And I think it's going to be somewhere in the ballpark of four, maybe four and a half million dollars. Got to remember this kid's basically coming off a career year. I know it's, he's only been in the league. Essentially it's been like three years, but it's technically four. He played two games in uh, two years ago. He played at the NHL level. Right. right. Um, but you know, career and games, career highs and goals assists points um his face-off percentage was a little bit lower this year um but he also did take more face-offs because he played wound up playing more games so to me that kind of, i feel like that's a little bit higher than his i think it was 48 last year um but he's got a lot um he's got a lot of upside he still has some some stuff he has to work on but you know i think he gets a, he, i think he gets a nice contract i think he gets a very nice raise but to say that it's lucrative i think i'm going to disagree on that Got it. Got it. Brad, you think Frost did enough to get a lucrative deal this year? No. Lucrative lucrative would be like you're talking like six, seven million, right? When you say lucrative. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I I'm thinking more along the line of four and a half to five in that in that general range. Uh four years, uh eighteen million. You know, maybe 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 five years, uh, twenty four million, something along those lines. Uh, you know, I I don't know. It, it's hard. You know, it's hard as a forward. I remember Ryan Strom, uh, before uh, he signed the deal with the Rangers for two years, his last two years playing, 
uh, they went. Uh, he he had very similar numbers to Frost. You know, when when after he played with Panera, and all of a sudden he was getting, you know, 50, 60 points a season. So they signed him to a two-year, nine million dollar contract. You know, and then obviously he left, and uh, they brought in uh, Vinny Trocheck. But he 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 signed four years. That two years, four and a half million a year, nine million. I'm thinking that that's probably about the rate he's going to get. You know, I mean, if the Flyers want to sign him longer, uh, you know, and take a leap of faith, that's not a bad thing either. If they if they truly believe that this is uh, the tip of the iceberg for him, you know, I mean, really, what do you guys think? You guys see him play a lot more than I do. I'm just looking at sheer numbers and trying to figure it out what are his strengths right. and what are his weaknesses as a, as a player i mean is he good along the boards has he got a great shot what what's what's the whole deal well that's why i went to you first from the alps by the you know like has he done enough to get what would be deemed a lucrative contract i mean coming from the inside i've seen inconsistent play i've seen a guy that can can take control of the game that can take control of the face-off circle that can make plays around the net and then you know, we already had one ghost in Philadelphia while he's been on second ghost in Philadelphia where he just disappears and maybe just chills out with Farabee for a while on the end of the bench and you don't, don't really hear much. I mean, overall on the season, you're looking at a kid, you know, that put up 19 goals, 27 assists for that 46 points. But I wouldn't say 46 points should command a lucrative deal. Not yet. It just so happens he's up for free agency that already that bridge deal that he got is up and he's still restricted. So Flyers sort of have, um, you know, that control in the situation, Brian, that you were talking about before. Why hasn't a deal gotten done? Well, because mm -hmm. he's restricted and they, can, and they can match whatever offers out there. But what other offers are going to come out there? I wanted to get Brad's opinion from that. There he is. And – and he, he he lets us know that from around the league looking at it, right, that they're not going to be much of a bidding war. So ultimately, I think what it's going to come down to, it's going to come down to, you know, he wants probably closer to $3 million, whereas the Flyers would want closer to $2 million because what what are they going to have in cap space on a year-to-year -year basis until that cap, you know, rises? Three mil? You know, that would be the ceiling that I would think, right? Maybe you could wiggle around and make it four or five million. I've seen on uh, Sportac has, has shown that that uh, could be the upside of the cap space, depending on what other deals. But, you know, it's been a busy offseason. They've already spent some money. So that to me is saying that the Flyers want to ink this guy, you know, maybe two, three years at a two to three million level, somewhere in between. Maybe it comes down to arbitration to get to that exact dollar figure because I think Morgan Frost still has a little bit more to prove. I agree. I agree. I mean, to continue that answer a little bit more, yeah, I mean, he's pretty solid along the boards, I think. His four checking isn't terrible. Uh, could definitely use some improvement there. But to me, his biggest downfall right now is as a centerman is – the defensive side. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he's the strongest on uh, on the back end of the uh, the the back end of the ice in his own zone. I think he needs a lot of work there. Um, and yeah, you know, he's shown that he could definitely play. He's had his his hot streaks and and his moments where he's looked really really good. Uh, probably his best season to date, like completely, has been this past year under John Tortorella. Not just right. statistically, but um, his play as well has, has been really good moments. You also got to remember, he's only been in the league for about four years. Uh, so, you know, going into technically his, his fourth NHL season, there's definitely some room for growth. And I think we're starting to see it. Uh, but I mean, there's still aspects of his play that he definitely needs to step up on. And, and for me personally, it's definitely as a centerman, he has to get better in the defensive zone. The biggest thing that I like though, boys, right was the questions of durability, I believe, were put to bed last year. You know, this is a guy that I think he only missed one game last year, if that. Yeah. Yeah, only one game. Madison, play – play – Um, sorry, Ros I see – I saw Roscoe's comment. He kind of threw me off there. Speaking <laughs> of, I am producing tonight, so I should probably start showing some of these comments here. And yeah, man, read them <laughs> off, dude. Read them off. We've expressed our opinion. Let's get theirs. I'm sitting there. I'm sitting here just like, you know, la, 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 thinking somebody else is producing. Nope, just me. Morgan Frost, <laughs> he's the hot topic right now, man. It's all over Philly. 
He is. Um, a oh couple, uh, couple comments coming in here tonight. We got uh, our our new Yotes fan who who subbed with us last week. Uh, I was glad to see these guys chiming in. Tell tell those Aussie Ducks fans to quit quacking. I'm yodeling over here. <laughs> uh, we got uh, Swoopy chiming in. Yo, gentlemen. Sharks fan chiming in. Shots fired at a duck. Oh, I should have worn my jersey tonight. Um, Brad, this one's for you. Swoopy's making sure you're going to be all right for tonight's show. I, I'm, I, I'm still getting over the Aaron Boone disaster the last two days. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm not even going to ask. <laughs> Chuck's chiming in saying, "This is a hockey it. show, not a baseball show." So. <laughs> I mean, we, we're gonna leave that man. alone. I, I don't want to take your whole show up by, <laughs> by complaining about how stupid Boone is. So we'll just leave that alone. Our so, show, our show, our show, our show. This is this is group therapy here. This doesn't matter. Like we're all baseball guys here. Gotcha. <laughs> Sharks fan chiming back in saying, "I mean, if we're talking about ducks, I prefer mine to be well seasoned and roasted." That's uh, yeah, that is harsh. But I kind of like Peking. I kind of like Peking ducks, though. Peking duck is good. Yes, I do like. I do like a, a nice roasted duck, nice and like uh, medium rare, medium ish. Preferably crispy more on the outside and tender on the inside. Absolutely. Swoopy chiming back in as a result to our poll questions is three years for Frost. No deals longer than three years f- with any guy right now. Yeah, which I kind of agree with. We got uh, our Penguins fan chiming in and said, ha, I saw a duck yesterday. It quacked, and then a penguin pushed it off a cliff. Oh, my God. That's pretty I funny. could see it. I could see a three-year 8.5, 8.75 milk deal coming in. Oh, God, that's don't say that. That's kind of low. You think that's low? I, I mean, if, was, eight. if I was Frost, I'd be like, that's insulting. I'm better than that. I wouldn't sign that contract if I were him. <laughs> 46 points though i mean it's not you know what i mean like what can you command i mean like, yeah but who did you know, i you look when, at okay if i'm him if i'm him who did who exactly was i playing with i mean was i was i playing with panarin and uh yeah. and zibanejad who, who was i playing with i was playing with uh I, I don't whoever i was playing with you know i made it happen they didn't nobody set me up for all those goals i had to kind of do it myself yeah. true I, I mean, you know, again, I, I don't know this because I don't watch the Flyers enough to make that to make that comment. Other than the fact that there is there was kind of a lack of talent on the team last year, so I, I think that the fact that he was able to do that uh, tells you that he's he's going to be he's going to be a better player, and uh, you know maybe you should take a, a leap of faith. I, I'm going to give you an example. Okay, Rangers made a leap of faith with Chris Kreider. After after the John Tortorella disaster, when he was when John Tortorella kept sending him to the minors because he didn't think he was hustling, which we know he still doesn't really, you know, that's neither here or there. But they ended up signing him to a four year, twenty million dollar contract before the contract he signed a couple of years ago. All okay. Right. And it was a leap of faith because Kreider never scored more than like 13, 14 goals. You know, and as soon as he signed the contract. 28 26 24 28 yeah you know i mean and, and he you know he picked up his game as as he got older and he got better the problem is if you sign him now to like a two year contract okay what happens if he's really really good okay yeah and then it costs you a lot more in the end yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's and he's going to have a chip on his shoulder because He's going to feel like he, he was disrespected. No, you want to give the kid confidence, just like the Rangers did with Kreider. But where are you going to get the money? I don't think they got the money. That's what I'm just saying. I'm saying what they can afford. But no, you they, can they, give they, him. But you can raise the contract price each year. You, you can you can you can backload it if you want to, right? Banking on the cap going up, which it will. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I mean. That's true. That's true. I mean, that's why a that's lot of true. free agents are, are 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 looking at possible one year deals because. The cap supposedly is going up three million dollars next year. Yeah, supposedly. And the, I mean, the Flyers are right at at this moment. From what I saw earlier today, they are just south of three million in cap space at this moment. Right. So, I mean, I think that's another issue with with why he hasn't been signed yet. Is it has a lot to do with with where the cap space is now. So maybe, I mean, I'm sure Danny's got something up his sleeve. 
I'm sure he's probably still working on trying to move Sanheim. I'm sure he's trying to move a couple other guys as well to try and free up some cap space to get Morgan Frost signed. Um, do you guys think he's worth? Do you guys think he's worth a leap of faith? That's that's really that's really the bottom line, guys. I mean, you, I you can go by you can go by the forty six points, and you you can you can you know you can sit and you can you know poo poo it all you want if you want, it's so, so to say. You know what I mean? But yeah, I was poo pooing it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can poo poo it all you want, but the bottom line is, he's still young. He's yeah. going to get better, and there's a real good possibility that. You know, his numbers are going to be 50. What happens if he gets 55, 60 points this year? And then he gets 65 to 70 points the next year. You may right. not be able to afford him right. to keep him. You know, if you, if you give him four years, I think you should give him four years. That's that's just my opinion. I'm just basing it on what I saw with Kreider and how guys really do improve at, after year, after uh, year three. You know, into year four, there's a big, there's a big difference. Once they do it once, and they're right. young, they start getting better and better and better. Who's to say the well, guy won't have 25 goals this year? I, I'm willing to take that leap of faith on him because he played the 81 games and showed that the durability that he hadn't shown after taking some hits early on when he first was called up. So, yeah, I mean, I could backload that or however to make it work to give him a Chris Kreider like deal, but I'm sort of more on the lines of, of Kirk Cooper down here, Brian, you know? Mm -hmm. I agree totally with the term that Brad said. I'm, I'm all for a four year deal for, for him right now. Um, the other thing I'm, I'm kind of for is, and I didn't think about it until again, Brad brought it up backloading the contract, maybe in hopes that, that, you know, the salary cap does increase over the next couple of years, which I think that is the plan is to, to go up. I think it's like, Three or five million dollars or something like that over the next. They three years. better. They've made that lost pandemic money back. Come on. Oh, absolutely, on. they have. Come on. Um, Who you kidding, Batman? Come on. Well, yeah, to front load it Stop about. Boarding it. Stop boarding <laughs> it. Give it back to the people. That's who watches the game. Come on. Um, but to to maybe you know give him a little less money in the first year of his new contract. Give him a little bit more money in the second year, and then he, third and fourth years is where you really pay him because then you're really going to see where this kid is and how he developed. Yeah. But the yeah. the downside to that, and this is a double edged sword. What if he doesn't take those steps forward? Mm. That's the only downfall, because it could happen. It could happen that maybe maybe this is the most goals that he's going to score in his career. Odds are, it's probably not with the way that he played last year, but it could be. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm, I would give him a little more than two and a half. I would probably ballpark him around three, maybe three and a half and max it out there for four years. And then depending on how those four years go, all right, let's talk long-term max deal, depending maybe on how some, he continues to, to develop. So maybe, maybe some performance incentives that could bump it up to five or something. Yeah, we could do that. I mean, they just did that to, to Connor Bernard. His entry level contract has like he can make up to like three and a half million dollars over his entry level contract because it's loaded with incentives. So yeah, you could definitely do that too. That's that's always an option. What's up, LJ? Saying trade Carter Hart. <laughs> Yo, he's got one. <laughs> No, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. You know, we appreciate all the commenters that are chiming in tonight and who's bringing you all the comments down at the little bar is Gleason's Bar. Hey, you see what I did there? Uh, it's did. located at 6700 Mill Creek Ave in Levittown, PA. Use promo code A2D for 10% off your order whenever you dine in, take out, or order online at Gleason'sBarAndSteaks.com. We got uh, Jake Friel chiming in. You can catch Jake on Birds of a Feather every Thursday night on our e loaded, and I mean loaded, Eagles Talk Thursdays. Um, <laughs> where you can catch, I don't know, who, 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 who do we have on Thursdays? We have basically everybody on Thursdays. You got Marcus Thomas on Pro Fan Talk. You got Irving Fryer, Hollis Thomas on Bedded. You have Les Bowen with Bowen on the Birds at 3 o'clock on Thursday. Then you got the Birds of a Feather guys. This is where you can catch Jake. Loaded Eagles talk on Thursday, so don't miss that. Lots of stuff going on here at A2D Radio. Lots of great, great, great stuff. Uh, Swoop saying he's agreeing with Brad. 
Uh, but Flyers are in a whole different position and situation than the Rangers were at that time, which is a fair point. Okay, yeah, that's fair. And Flyers fan, we didn't miss your comment. I put it up there. I may not have read it, but it's uh, it got put up there. He was just saying uh, basically that the only person on the roster sh- that uh, should get a lucrative contract right now is uh, Travis Konechny. I semi-disagree with, but that's because um, he spent a couple years where he, he was – just sitting on the end of the bench by himself. Kirk, my brother, said it doesn't matter who he was playing with. His individual skill and his and he is displayed on the ice didn't warrant any position to make any demands in, nego- in the negotiations room. He played good, but he still showed noticeable inconsistencies, which is essentially what Rob said earlier. Right. And TK, just to back up, you know, he's earning some money already. He signed a six-year deal back in 2019 worth 33 mil. You know, mm-hmm. so, you know, I think he's earning that five to five, five point five to six million a year deal. I mean, you know, if he continues the 30 goal pace, you know, and proves to be a leader. Yeah. You can talk about restructuring or on the extension, you know, offering him an extension and a better deal. Sure. But he's getting paid. That's that's he, that's why he's standing and delivering. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Absolutely. Love you, Kirk. You have a blessed one as well, my friend. Swoopy saying Flyers have a long way to go. They do. I half I half agree. I half agree. And I know we'll talk about it in the next segment, but I, I feel like I think they, they're I think they're heading in the right direction though. Right. Then that's kind of where I'm gonna go is is especially when we get a little more into the second segment here and we actually discuss the offseason moves. Um you know, I've I've thought I think the additions are good. I think they're they're really good as far as leadership goes as far as experience goes as far as creating that culture in the locker room goes i think i think they're going to be um a very different team this year i think they're going to be a better team this year i don't think they're going to be in the top 10 of the draft i'm just going to throw that out there now (laughs) but i've said crazier shit and the exact opposite has happened so maybe i'll just say they'll be at number one pick (laughs) this is true (laughs) I mean, I called the, I called on a, I called uh, Anaheim to be a playoff team last year, and they did not. Right. Well, here's a question I have for you boys. Let's say the Flyers and Frost can't come to terms. What are his options? Where do you? Where would? You, what teams do you think would be interested in a Morgan Frost? Honestly, I think. If they can't come to to an agreement, and I think they will, because I think Frosty actually does like playing here. I like, I think yeah. he likes the coach. I think he likes his teammates. Um, it's a young, it's a young locker room where he can continue to grow and develop with with a bunch of other guys in there. But I think if they do not come to terms on on a deal, I think a team like a rebuilding team, like maybe maybe Ottawa, could be Montreal. a good fit. Montreal could be a good fit. Um, Anaheim could be a good for any any really any of the rebuilding teams that are getting ready to kind of come out and and compete again. So maybe maybe a team like Buffalo could be a good fit for Morgan Frost. Although I think they're pretty deep as far as centermen go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so a team any team like that that's about ready to kind of just say, hey, you know, we're we're ready for the playoffs. What can we add? What what piece here and there can we can we just throw in here and take off? That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I mean, it does make a lot of sense. I mean, I do see him sticking here, but there's a team not too far up that is not a fan favorite of Mr. Brad Ryer. That's New York Islanders, who I think would give Frosty a home real quick and keep him in the area. <laughs> He's giving me the death stare. Okay. <laughs> You better not trade him there. No, I mean, he might not. You're not trading him to Short Island now, are you? It's possible. You never know. No, no. Apparently, uh, Detroit's an option according to Swoop, which I don't blame them. Although, just getting. Detroit, yeah, send him to Detroit. Yeah, send him right to the playoffs. That's that's great. Um, Flyers fan uh, 1995 wants to know which 80s Flyers goaltender had the worst save percentage. I can't answer that. I, I could give her give you a guess, Bob Froese. 
I, I, he's the only one I really remember. I mean, it's not Hextall because Hextall was good. So it definitely wasn't him. I mean, Dominic, uh, Dominic, what's his name? Dominic, uh, now I forgot his last name. Roussel. Roussel. Was he 80s? I thought he was, was he, he was not good. <laughs> I think yeah. he was 90s, but he was not good. Uh, maybe Garth Snow? Or was he? Uh, you're, oh, you're, you're safe, Brad. You're safe. The Islanders have no money. You're good. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> They don't. They. I. I don't want to see. They're it. in the red. They got a shed. Wait, They're hold like, up. They didn't save any money from the Josh Bailey trade. I mean, maybe this isn't updated. I'm looking at cap friendly. I don't know. They, it could be not. A... They usually update pretty pretty quickly, so they may not. <laughs> they may be in the red. Good. Good. I hope they Seconded. lose more guys. Seconded. Right. <laughs> Well, then you look at a lot of teams out west have some money to spend. The San Jose Sharks, your Anaheim Ducks, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Frost. Frost, Frost could go out and team back up with uh, Oscar. Yeah, he, could, he absolutely could. I thought they played pretty well together. Or no, was it? Was Guys, it last year? They're not going to trade a 26-year-old player who just started to come into his own. They're, they're, you think they don't come to terms, but I'm just saying you might not. You don't know. You don't know. Uh, I mean, you I, figured he I, would have been signed by now. He was, should have been a priority. Right. They, they may be trying thing. to, and as you said before, they may be trying to, you know, get some cap, some more cap space so that they can give him a little bit more. I don't think they want to go two and a half, three million. I think they want to start at least at 3.5. Okay. Show That's, a little. I mean, respect. it's possible. It's yeah. possible. Yeah. yeah. It could be, I, it mean, could be more be than careful. just a negotiation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would be real careful about, about trying to lowball this guy. Because I mean, you do, you lowball him, and he has a couple of good years. He's not going to forget. You know, he's going to think you have no confidence in me, and now, and then he's going to go out and he's going to play his ass off, and then say goodbye. You don't want to do that. Mm. That's why you got to be careful with guys like with young players like that. I mean, you've been developing him for four years now. He finally had his breakout season. Okay, it, or it looks like he's not, he's starting to break out. You know, let. Pay him. Pay him whatever you need to pay him. Pay that man his fucking money. Yeah. Uh, John I mean, Malkovich rounders. Yeah. yeah. You know what's funny? I've never seen that. I've seen a lot of John Malkovich. Music. That's one I've never seen. Teddy KGB. Come on. Gotta uh, say I can't say. Uh, I can't say that pay I have. Pay that man his fucking money. Uh, I can't do a Russian accent, though. No, neither can I. I, I work yeah. with this dude at the Telford, and he, he does accents left and right, and they're, they're good accents. I'm sitting there. I'm like, what do you do? Like, can you give me some lessons on how to do a good accent? And then he laughs at me and walks away. Um, all right, so Flyers fan, give me five Flyers players you would like to see on a Devils and Penguins and Blackhawks team. None. If they're on a Flyers roster right now, I don't want to see them on any of those teams, especially Chicago. I'd like to see Mark Stoll on the Penguins. Yeah, he'd be the second Stoll brother to be a Penguin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they could. I, I'd love to see a parking cone on their defense. <laughs> I'd put Ristolainen on any of those teams. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yes. Well, well done. There um, you go. I mean, you could find you could find Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, you Kirk could says, come up with a couple of guys. <laughs> uh, five says, might be I a little think... bit. Five might be a lot, though. That that five, yeah. Me, but... There's not. There's definitely not five on that roster. I would give up right now. There's definitely a couple. Um, Kirk says, I honestly don't think it's really something worthy of entertaining, but hey, if they didn't sign him, probably Pittsburgh. Yeah, I think they get the deal done regardless, but I'm not. Yeah, it, You know, there's a possibility that it doesn't happen. Yeah. What does Pittsburgh have? I say there's a 95% chance that it happens, that yeah. they sign him. He's home. Like, you don't just, just get rid of homegrown players. Oh, I agree. You want to do anything to see them break out. You want to try, try to, try to get them to break out because you know you're. Penguins got no money either. Yeah. Good. Good. No, I agree. No, you're right, Brad. No, continue. I'm sorry. I yeah, you're you're right. Uh, You don't want to, you know. uh, But the thing, the only way is, is that what if from you know Danny being around this team and being with player development, 
doesn't like what he sees, but how can he not like what you see? Because you got 81 games, because you got near 20 goals, because you got near 50 points. There's there's some things to like right there. Yeah, I mean, what, are you going to trade it for Mitch Marner or William Neal? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, if you could do no, that, happy. sure. I mean, then then you do it. In, then you do it in a second. But you know, you you might need to to sweeten the pot. I don't think the Flyers are ready are ready to make a trade like that yet. You know, just 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 saying. I not yet. Not yet. No, you know, I, I, I know, I think we're in full agreement here, the three of us, that, you know, uh, it's obviously something that you don't want to see happen. You want to see a guy like Morgan Frost pan out. You want to get him signed under contract, keep him in an orange and black jersey as long as you possibly can. Um, so Ryan wants to know, and I think I already have the answer to this question for me, who is a Flyers project that is turning your, your head right now? He really likes Ethan Sampson. It's a good one. It's a very, very good one. I mean, Forrester. When we saw his shot displayed on the NHL level, there's a lot to like there. Um, Zade Wisdom, too, playing in the um, Ontario League, I believe. Uh, season. I think he up. may have spent a little bit of time there, but I thought I saw him finish with the Phantoms. Yeah, he did finish with the Phantoms. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, I like Nova Cates, to be completely yeah. honest with you. I, know, I don't know if anybody else considers him a project, but – I, no, I, I agree. Any... I agree with you with him. Yeah, that's I, what I, I was going to say. I, I think he's he seen he seemed to be pretty uh, he seemed to be pretty good last year and was getting better and better as the season went along. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And and uh, yeah, I believe he was a fifth round pick by the Flyers too. So they didn't really have any high expectations for him. But he came and he had a great training camp and he made the roster. And since then, he just hasn't really stopped. He's high energy. He's hard working, blue collar. Uh, knows for the net, he's he does a lot of things right, and he's probably not going to get you more than 40 45 points a year. But for for a guy who's been a fifth round pick and how quickly he came up, I, I, yeah, I think they, they found a little bit of a gem with him. He, he'd be good on the second or third line, agreed. Uh, he, oh, know, I you, totally agree. He's a middle six player pay, for sure. You can't pay, you can't pay six or seven guys a lot of money. You know that's that's the thing. So you you need some of those guys. You need the high you need the high energy players on your team. That's very important. Oh, like oh, I totally agreed, and that's why I kind of think the Flyers are in good shape, and this rebuild's not going to take that long because there's a few guys on this roster that are like that. Well, the guy they got for Giroux, his brother pans out too. The guy they got for for Giroux, I really liked him last year. Oh, he had a great year. Yeah, I I, he I was impressed with him. I mean, he, he he. he to me showed showed a lot of promise for you guys, really did. Okay, five Flyers players you would hate to see play for the Devils, Penguins, Hawks. Uh, Flyers fans me. giving us all the questions tonight. C- connect me for sure. Connect right? me for sure. Yeah. Uh, Tip it. Who we were just it. talking about? Frost. Hart. Couturier. Couturier. Oh, heart. Yeah, there you go. That's five. Yeah. Yeah. We you agree know, on that five? Yeah. We agree you don't want to see the last guy you want to see on that, on one of those teams and then being in the Stanley Cup finals, Carter Hart yeah. making making saves for the Devils in the finals. Uh, that that would if that didn't turn your stomach, it, that would even turn my stomach. <laughs> Plus that like, is what you know, did you do? I to myself, the penguins. What did you do? What what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> I, it'd be, I feel like I'd be talking to my dog after he takes a crap on the floor. What did you it'd be do? like deja vu with Bobby? <laughs> 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 it'd be like deja vu with Bobrovsky, you know, just, you know, because you know, at some point, Carter Hart's going to win a Vesna. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's going to help a team win the Stanley Cup. Why can't he just stay here and do that in Philly? Come on. Yeah. Please. For sure. For He's sure. You've been good. He's Please. not that old. That's the whole point. Yes. If he was if he was 28, 29 right now, that'd be one thing. But was he 25, 26? 24 20, last I checked. 20, yeah, he might 24. turn 25. All right. So if he's 24 or 25, I mean, he'll be entering his prime when the rebuild's over. 
why would you trade him? The only way, yeah. reason you trade him is if he, he comes to you and says, I've had enough, get me out of here. Yeah, which but, I think but is... But other than that, other than that, he, he, I, I've never heard him say a bad word about anybody. He seems to be a pretty quiet guy anyway, so... Right. Well, you know, uh, August 13th. Oh, same same day as my brother. Nice. Same birthday. Uh, he'll turn 25. Uh, you know, I mean, Dan, Danny set this team up to go either direction, though. You know, if Hart, if Hart does move on or they move on from Hart or he doesn't pan out if they do put the faith in him and he just doesn't get better, well, they just drafted the best goaltender prospect in this draft you know, let alone who they've already had in the pipeline and who they've gained, you know, they drafted another goalie, you know, so they got really deep in a position that's been really thin in Philly for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I think they knew that going into that draft too, which is why I kind of, why they did it this, in their first year. They said, Hey, let's, 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 you know, let's get some depth here in case, you know, things go awry. I mean, yeah, you have, um, you you have Sam Erson who could be good in the situation of of you know where the Flyers are right now in the rebuild. He could be good enough. Uh, I I don't think he really did much poorly last year, but I still think he has a lot to prove as a goaltender in the NHL. But for me, it's it's you know you, you need depth there. You you absolutely right. need depth there because you never know. To Carter Hart goes out in a uh, season ending injury, right? You got to make sure you have depth there for sure. For sure. Great example. Great yep. example. Well, we'll get into, you know, what the Flyers have done more in this offseason here in the second period. But bringing you tonight's first period, the future of Morgan Frost is, a, you know, an organization that can help you build for your future. And that's EXP Realty. If you're looking to buy or sell a home or if you're looking for a change in career or brokerage, contact Alan Foye of VXP Realty LLC at 302-682-8820 or visit him at Alan Foye at exprealty.com. Been working with him. He's been great trying to get me a place. He's been awesome. So yep. I strongly, strongly suggest it. Right. So camp roughly, you know, a little more than what up, Benny? Glad to have you in the chat. Already been chatting it up already in the YouTube already. You see that little uh, insignia by Benny's name. If you're just tuning into your first A2D radio show, that means that Benny's a member here uh, at A2D radio. And you can be too for $9.99 a month, $9.99 a month. Less than ten dollars a month. A month, you can get some amazing perks, including shout outs, member only shows, appearances on your favorite shows, and weekly picks from the Money Pop Podcast. Join today. The links down in the comments. Can also get you on our new show on Monday nights called Fandemonium, where you can go one on one with an A two D member. Nice in a uh, game show where trivia is everything. I got to free myself up for one. Like, you know, I, my, my work schedule, but I, I, I know, uh, I know you guys are always looking for hosts. I got, or uh, are guys that jump on and play the game. So and I got to go on there and get my ass handed to me in trivia. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a good time. I, 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 I got my ass handed to me and I'll tell you what, <laughs> the, only, the only sport that I actually did well in was hockey. Nice. Yeah, nice. I was able to, I was able to handle myself and get all my points in hockey. Nice. Uh, yeah, the other sports, you know, I baseball, I could have competed if I would have pressed the button a little faster, but you know, because I did know all the answers, but uh, I got killed in football, destroyed in wrestling because I, I, I don't even know any wrestlers anymore. I mean, I stopped watching wrestling after Greg the Hammer Valentine retired, <laughs> so it, it's been a nice. while for me, yeah. <laughs> I had no I shot, that, right? I mean, I, I, I'm one and one on Fandemonium. I the only reason why I lost to Pete is because Pete's trigger finger was a little bit quicker than mine. Well, that, that, that I use like, that I use that, that excuse much. too. I use that excuse too. But I mean, you know, like the end. It's like I sit there and I just not to give away my strategy, but I'm sitting like this, and I must have been going up as he went down, and he literally just was literally just beating me. Yeah, I use I use that excuse too. But I mean, you know, Chrome, <laughs> Chrome just knew Chrome just. I mean, he killed me. He 
he got every NBA question. He got every wrestling question. I can't counteract that. Look at the devil and he shall appear. Chrome saying, what's up, guys? Best hockey show in business. Appreciate you, Chrome. Uh, in case you guys didn't see it, uh, Chrome had two amazing interviews this past week uh, with former WWE superstars Rich Swan and Tyler Breeze. Amazing. They are archived here on YouTube, just like everything that we do here at A2D Radio. So make sure you go back, check out those interviews. Chrome absolutely killed it with those guys. Great conversations, great person. Chrome always brings on the good guys. Like I love, I love when he um, does his wrestling interviews. And also, for those who haven't been able to see it, three wrestling pages. I guess they were wrestling pages. Um, actually picked up and commented on Chrome's interview with Tyler Breeze. Um, so definitely keep That's an eye fabulous. out for those. It was awesome. Um, so he absolutely crushed it. So definitely go back and check them out on YouTube for sure. For sure. LJ chiming in again saying Frost will be a good center for Cutter and Mish. I agree. I agree. I can't wait for Cutter to get up here. <laughs> Says Carter Hart will never sniff a Stanley Cup. The hate is real. It's palpable. It's, it's, it's. Bittersweet is what it is. We we this is well established. This is well documented. Mava's hatred for Carter Hart, and she's entitled to it, you know. And the thing it is is that good news is, is there's a lot of options for this organization. So you know, definitely pander for who you think should be in there. You know, I just don't think I'm ready to turn over the reins to an Arison or a Cal Peterson right now. I don't think that does anybody any good. No, I'm definitely not giving it to Cal Peterson right now. I'm not at the last couple of years he had. Right. He just came crashing down last year. Which Canadian franchise right now would highly benefit starting a rebuild? I'll say Vancouver. It's from they the sort of are, aren't they? They've been rebuilding for a long time. Yeah, they have. Since 2011. <laughs> Calgary, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Calgary's in a retool right now. Um, with the new no GM, new head right coach. Now. They really are. I mean, they they got to make GM. up their mind whether to go for it or uh, or cash in and 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 get back. Yeah, I can't wait. It, uh, Chrome, we did have a, we did have a lot of fun, but you you definitely had had that trigger finger that I didn't have, but. Uh, as I said, even if I would have been able to get through on baseball, you still killed me on hockey and not, not hockey and basketball and uh, and wrestling. There's no way when there's no way I, I didn't even know those answers. So, you know, it was fun, though. It was fun. Ten pages picked up the interview. Including oh, nice. that great. So that's that's nice. that's just to show you more incentive on, on why to watch that interview. From yep. your family, brother. We we love you, dude. We support everything that you do here, brother. You you already know that. You are the man. Like I said the man crushes it on interviews. He just absolutely crushes it. Hey, it's just it, so many good things happen here at HD Radio. Right? I mean, across the board. You know what I mean? It's just another great example. You know, what's good for one is good for all. Mm -hmm. And we got something for everybody. All right, so typical Canadians fan kind of agrees with you guys. If Canucks or Flames, I think they're they're really the only two. I think um, me personally, I think it's going to be the Jets. Um, mm. And you're already starting to see it. They bought out Blake Wheeler. Um, they're they're talking about uh, trading um, Connor Hellebuck, Mark Scheifele, and there was one other name. I mean, they've been talking about trading Nikolai Ellers for a couple of years, so he might be on his way out. Dubois is gone. So, I mean, they, they might be calling it quits as well. So, just another team to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The problem with Winnipeg is nobody wants to play there. I mean, that, that's, 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 that's the problem. I mean, they have great fans. But it just seems like no matter how good they are, nobody seems to want to play in Winnipeg. I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know anything about the city or anything like that, other than my, uh, you know, my grandfather spent the uh, 
final few years of his life living there, but I, I don't really know anything about it. And the only thing I know about it is the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I, I, I know mm -hmm. that, but other than that, you know. Me and Krim on the same page as far as strategy goes for fandomonium. Again, don't don't miss that show at 9.30 every Monday night. It's always a good time. Contra the shit out of that buzzer. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure I cracked my phone screen. <laughs> but I mean, I, I like, you know, I mean, if the Leafs can't get it together, that could be a team that gets blown up. You know, what about Edmonton as well? I mean, how many times are they going to try the same thing and get, you know, expect different results? So there's a, there's a few teams that can blow it up in there, up north of the border. No. For sure, oh, like you can make an argument for any of these. He's like Ottawa's. Ottawa's Edmonton just starting came, to come out of it. Oh, they came close me. last year. They, yeah, they did. They did. They, they just showed again that the defense and the goaltending crumbled again. Now you know, I, 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 I was with you. That was my pick to hoist the cup. I thought McDavid, McJesus was going to be, you know, the thing for the next calendar year, and it didn't happen. Yeah, I mean, they gave they gave the Golden Knights a hell of a battle. I mean, they gave him a yeah, better. Yeah. They gave him. I thought they gave him a better battle than the, actually, than Dallas did. Even though Dallas went to seven games, no, Dallas went to six games, right? It was a six. Had, yeah. Yeah, but it was they. It was that seven. was the Western Conference Final, though. Yeah, I know, but it was but it seven. They, yeah, but I think Edmonton, Edmonton. Did it go seven or six? No, it went seven. It went seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I think yeah, the Eastern but, Conference went six. But 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 the. Uh, the Golden Knights smoked them in the games they won. Mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't smoke Edmonton in any of those games. They were all very close games. You got two potent, high offensive teams going at it. Yep. You're bound to have very high scoring, very, very competitive games. But, I mean, as far as Edmonton, I think of all the uh, teams that are competing right now from Canada, I would have to probably say that Edmonton might be the one to crash and burn first. I know, I know Toronto's having their issues, but big strikeout for Kimbrell. Um, somebody's got to go though, in uh, somebody's mm -hmm. got to go in Toronto. Yeah, whether it's and then, uh, Matthews or or Marner yeah. or Nylander, one of those three are going. Yeah, and to Rob's point about Edmonton, you know how how many times are you going to keep doing the same shit and expect to sit, expect a different result in Edmonton, like? That's great. Your your power play is one of the best in the league, and it should be with the roster that they have. But how 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 do you expect you have to win to if be you, better five if you on can't five. compete five on five? Exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah. They and they can't win five on five. I don't ask me why. I don't know. But they they're a much worse team five on five than they are on the power play offense. I can tell you why, because their defensemen aren't good. That's why. No, you're you're right. Sorry, I got distracted. I was making sure Rojas caught, caught that ball to get that win. So Phillies win four three, big win. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I'm watching San Diego destroy Toronto. Good. Go Yankees! They are right. Musgrove yeah. pitching to get a gem. Yes, I turned so is. many people on the fantasy to to pitch Musgrove tonight. That was a good idea. I'll tell you what, Gary Sanchez. Toronto's offense is overrated. Yeah, mm -hmm. Gary Sanchez and Manny Machado hit two of the hardest home runs I've seen in a long time. They yeah. look like Stanton used to hit them before Stanton became Mr. Strikeout King this year. Fucking Matt Mets should have kept Gary Sanchez and just DH'd him. <laughs> I don't know what the hell they were thinking there. But, I mean, you know, the thing is, is he may, may have been like, no, I want to catch. And be like, all right, bye. You know, he's catching <laughs> down San Diego, you know. Mm -hmm. They needed so a catcher. He, uh, I think Austin Nola's he, got, what, a long-term injury? He, 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 he brought him in. in San Diego, Sanchez. He does, right? Yeah, he's a back. He's the backup catcher, and he DHs for the most part. Yeah. So, great play the other night against the Phillies, um, throwing down to third base on a uh, on a bunt. Great effort by Sanchez there. Great catch by Machado. Stott, if he had stayed on the bag, probably would have been safe. But I digress. Sanchez can throw. 
He always had a good arm. Well, the thing is, too, is like before we jump back on here to hockey, um, he was falling backwards as he was making that throw. I don't know if you saw the highlight. Surprise, he, surprise. He was actually <laughs> falling backwards. He slipped in the dirt, and you could tell. Uh, he slipped in the dirt, and as he's falling back, just throws it. And the throw is not terrible. It wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. Manny was able to to catch it and make the tag. And, again, oh. Stott overslid the bag a little bit, and, and I thought that was the reason why that he was out. But, I mean, it's a great overall effort. What do you mean? Wait, hang on, Mike. The the Kings are uh, just coming out of a rebuild. Yeah, they came out. They 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 are out of a rebuild now. Yeah, they just came out of it. Maybe he's confused because Dowdy's still playing. <laughs> and Kopitar. Right, right, right. Kopitar just signed what for two more years, three more years. I can't remember. Now. Mm, I mean, there's nobody in that on that roster right now that I would give the C two outside of Kopitar, so I don't blame him for that. Yeah, no. it was an important signing, I think, for them. Uh agreed. Yeah. All right, 2007 Ducks versus 2010 Flyers in a cup. How fun would that have been? Yep. <laughs> I think there could have been a couple, uh, um, how you say, uh, body outlines on the ice after that series. I've, I think there would have been a couple guys who would have definitely gone after each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was before Corey Perry got fun, too. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people hate him. Because the Mets always met with a good team or competitive with a lousy team. Yep. Unfortunately. What's up, Ant? Um, says I know how the Rangers how the Rangers are going to get over the hump and win the Stanley Cup. They need Kim Kardashian to give oh, them Oh, no. They cup. don't need Kim Kardashian. No. Keep her as far away from them as possible. Yeah, just... Keep no, she gets innocent people out of jail. She got her law degree and shit. She turned it around. I think she she no longer curses NBA players' careers. <laughs> oh no, 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 that's Khloe Kardashian. Sorry, my bad. I feel like that's all of them. I think that's all of them. all the above. Yeah, it is all of them. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, actually, I did hear that that she actually got her law degree, mm-hmm. and she's actually a. Uh, um. I don't want to say a prosecutor, but she's she's like she's essentially a defense attorney or something like that, or she's going to be. But yeah, I did hear that. All right, so what do we got? We got uh, that's all the comments we got for the moment. Yeah, we'll go into some of these offseason moves. I mean, we saw one more uh, for the Flyers that you pointed out, Brian, in our description there on YouTube in terms of the Flyers offering a two-year contract to Ole Lixell worth 787500000 thousand annually. Uh, he only saw eight games in the NHL, but he was good for 14 goals, 31 assists for 45 points in 53 games with the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. Do you like that signing? Um, I liked it because I think it just builds depth for the organization, but – I think some of the other deals that we covered last week were equally as good. No, I agree for that reason. He He's a good depth player. I think he's going to be a good bottom six player for Flyers eventually. Um, obviously, he needs more time in the NHL, but you know he's, he's showing that he could be a solid playmaker um, and, and, and be a good asset to, to the line that he's on. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't put him any more than the, than the third line, but um, yeah, he's, he's shown that he can be decent with the puck. I mean, he's a little undersized, uh, as, uh, a forward would be, but you know, yeah, he's, it's a good deal. It's a bit of a bargain and you're getting, you're getting solid, solid production out of him. You know, that's a no lose points. contract though. Yeah, exactly. It's a no lose contract. Yeah, you're getting for that, for that kind of money. Points. I mean, that's yeah. For that kind of money. I mean, you, you can't, you, you can't lose with that. No, for sure. I love the deal, honestly. And, Brad, uh, you were speaking last week in terms of um, Garnet Hathaway uh, signing with the Flyers and him being a really good fit for Torch system. Does that, you know, move the needle for you with this Flyers offseason? Yes. 
Yeah, I really like Hathaway. I, I mean, I was really hoping that the Rangers could find a way to get him into the lineup. He's he's a hard nosed player. You know, he'll he'll create he'll create disturbances in front of the net. You know, and and, and that's that's very needed in in these days because you know what some of these goalies are so good that you're not going to score on them unless right. uh, you get them distracted in front of the net. Right. You know, that's, that's, right. that, that's why, and, 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 you know, he can, he can, he can drop them with the best of them too. Uh, you know, he can drop the gloves with anybody. He's, he's a tough player and he can score a little bit and you know what, he's, he's real good in the corners and uh, you know, he'll help protect the players and, and you won't have to rely as much on, on Nick Deloria. You don't have to give him as much ice time. Maybe, maybe you would end up, you could end up trading him at some point. Right. Because I don't know how much right. how needed he really is if if uh, you have Hathaway if Hathaway plays. Yeah, here and there, but I mean with those bottom six guys, you know what I mean. Sometimes you got to sub in and out. You got to let uh, knuckles heal. You know what I mean? Yes, very true, very <laughs> true. Hathaway is a little bit more uh, is a little has a lot more skill than Delorier, though. No, sure. I I think so. um I think he's pretty even. yeah yeah. Even he's got a little Brian? bit more skill. He's, yeah, he's I would say it's a little bit even. I mean, yeah. depending on what you're looking at there, I, Garnet Hathaway, I think, has a little bit more offensive upside than Delorier does. But that's Delorier what, is a much about. better – Delorier yeah, is a much about, better that's penalty that's killer. Right. Oh, right. Yeah, he's, but yeah. Which, I mean, that aids the overall evaluation of the package for sure. I think what Hathaway does is that – you know, you lost uh, McEwing last year during the trade deadline. He gives you like a piece like that back. And that was nice having the two of them, both Delorier and McEwing, and now Hathaway. On Hathaway that is a six. much better player than Todd Ewing, though. Yeah. You think I, he's much better? I, I think he's oh, a good. I think he's a good player. Then you're ultimately I, net positive, then. No, I like I, I like Hathaway. I, as, as, I, as I said, I, I would have liked to have yeah. seen, uh, seen him for the Rangers on their fourth line. He would have been. Well, it would have been a beautiful thing. With them, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think he's, I think he's a uh, very much, very, very similar player to Barkley Goodrow, and you, you can't go wrong with a player like that. Yeah, for sure. You know, no, and, and players are a little. Important. He's a little bit more. He's a little bit scarier when he drops the gloves than Barkley Goodrow. Right. It's Not that Barkley, Barkley can't Barkley. handle himself, but he's a little small. It's a little right. bit bigger too. Um, no, but I I mean I'm with Brad. I I love the signing of Garnet Hathaway. Um not necessarily just for what he does on the ice, but you know, he's a good leader. He's he helps create a culture. He's similar similar to what um to to what Delorier brings in the locker room is positivity. Um you know, helps create that culture. It gets good things going, gets gets, you know, that positivity flowing. Sits there, he's a voice. Um he's going to sit down and he's going to talk. Um, so that's, that's something huge, especially for the younger guys. You know, you got to bring these type of guys in. You can put Hathaway on a line with two younger guys and he's going to be sitting in between both talking about can play any, which has happened on any line. You can put him on the first line, second line, third line, or fourth line. I don't know if I would ever put him in the top six, but I would definitely. No, but you could, you could put him on, you could put him on there to create, to create mayhem. On the ice, you know, yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, I mean, you, you could put it. You no, can, I get what you're saying. Kind of like how the Flyers used uh, Raffle back in the day. You know, sometimes you'd have to move him up to take a, a first line spot. You know. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to say. He he's the kind of player. He's got some skills. You can put him. You can put him up. You can put him. You can put him up. Put him down in the same game. Right. You know, I mean, it, right? It oh, yeah, Michael Rothwell has had those skills to bring on, on as he was a pretty good power forward that you could put him with two skilled players and really make a contribution in a top line effort. I get what you're saying, and this you're saying Hathaway is the same type of player. Yeah, that's that's exactly what that's exactly what he is, and right. I'm not saying you'd want to have him as your first as on the first line all season. Don't, no, don't get me wrong, but I'm saying in the course of a game, okay. Uh, if if they come out flat and they just need to to change things up, you know, just to move the needle a little bit, they can do stuff like that with him. I feel okay, okay. I got you now. I feel what you're saying. I'm I'm picking up what you're putting down. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, they could use him. I mean, the Rangers do that with Barkley Goodrow. Mm -hmm. You know, he 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 plays on he plays on all four lines at, at you know during the season. He, he yeah. did that, and they can do that with him too because he's got he's got he's good in the corners. He and he can set up plays. You know, he's good defense. He's always been a reliable defensive player, and and he can score, and he can he can he can get in front of the net and cause havoc too. And and you know, if somebody's uh, not not treating one of their players right. Uh, you know he can make sure that 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 issue stops. Yep. If you know what I mean. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> I do know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, before we move on to the next commenter, I do want to just throw in here what I think has been the key for this offseason is how the Flyers have taken care of most of their restricted free agents. It was absolutely vital that you ink Noah Cates and Cam York. These are guys that are going to be part of the core of this team as this team rebuilds and moves back into playoff contention. Throw on Ronnie Attard's two-year deal as well. I think he's a guy that could be a solid, you know, top six, you know, uh, defenseman, one or two pairing. He can sub in on one, but he's a solid number two pairing guy on the right side. So uh, ultimately taking care of business, Frost would be the fourth player there, but you, you know, you have a lot of this co future core, uh, uh, the future of this team, Brian is inked down when you had Bobby Brink inked last year, you know what I mean? And then moving mm -hmm. on to entry level deals for some of these draft picks, both recent past and present. So, I mean, ultimately I think this has been a pretty successful off season for the flyers. On to me, Metal Mike. Yeah, I have to agree with you, Rob, before I jump into me, Metal Mics here. Um, yeah. I think it has been a su successful offseason, surprisingly busy. They're bringing in um, good vet pieces to take take these kids to the next step. I think that's been huge. And you're going after the guys. You're getting guys signed to bridge deals that, that you need moving forward for this team to be successful and get out of the rebuild faster than, than um, anticipated. And a lot sure. of people are expecting four to five years, but I could see I could see them back in the playoffs in two years if if things continue to to progress and guys like Couturier and Atkins they can stay healthy. But mm -hmm. um, five current prospects, huh? Um, okay, five current projects. So I would have to say Jacob Perot is one uh, scoring right winger. Um, Pretty good, pretty good on his skates. He's got a he's got a nice little quick release on his wrist shot. So he's one I'm I'm excited for. Owen Zellweger, um, just coming off one of his best years in the uh, I believe it was the WHL. He's in. Um, what a top defensive player in that league. Um, Nathan Gauthier is one that I'm excited for. Um, big body, power center. Um, really good face-offs. Um, does have a lot of scoring ability. He's not afraid to get in front of the net. That's another one I'm excited for. Um, I don't want to say Leo Carlson because he's an obvious one. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of some of the guys that are down there that could make make the roster out of camp. Um, who have I caught up in my NHL be a pro? <laughs> um I want to see I want to see Isaac Lundestrom take a step forward. He's not I don't consider him a prospect. I think he's 24 years old. I don't consider him a prospect, but he I could still consider him a project. He hasn't really uh lived up to his potential, but I I, I like Isaac Lundestrom. I want to see him continue to grow and take a next step forward. Number 5. How about Jamie Drysdale, Brian? Uh my biggest my only issue with Jamie, I don't consider him a project. He's a uh, He's the real. How about deal. him taking the next step though, and getting getting, right. uh, you know, being being one of the league's top defensemen? He's, well, he's, I mean, he's, got some, he's good. He's he's definitely going to get there. He's definitely good. Um, I think he just needs a better line mate than Cam Fowler. Um, Cam's been taking some steps back, and I think it's kind of hurting. That defense is just as a whole. That defense has been horrible the last couple years. Um, so hopefully Cam's the addition of Radko Gudis can help with that. Help bring some um, stability and and help. Drysdale take that next step, but I'm trying to think of like some more under the radar guys too. Maybe um, Pavel Mintikov, who I think went back to juniors last year, or he's playing in Russia. I think he's playing in Russia. Um, he was their top pick a couple years ago. Um, small guy, offensive defenseman, has a lot of offensive upside, but I think 
he's one I'm excited for because he can be a really good two-way player if he develops right. Um, there's a lot of hype behind him. Great skater, really good vision, um, strong on the puck, on the defensive um, end, and you know, obviously, like I said, he's got he's got the offensive upside. He could be a he, he could be the future quarterback on the power play. Is is really what I'm gonna, even more so than Drysdale. Um, but I um, I'm excited for all all them. I'm excited for this this team just this year after this off season. With with the additions of Gudis and Kalorn and a couple other guys getting Dostal back under contract was huge. Getting Bo Grill, um, he's back on under contract for a year, but we'll see where he goes from there. But it's a lot to be excited for to be being a Ducks fan. A lot to be excited for. For sure, for sure. And you know what? We can get into more around the league stuff. Um to uh, round out the show here as we move on, you know, talking a little Ducks prospects and and what have you. But uh, overall, boys, before we move on and tell the good people about the Philly sports trip, um, how would you grade the Flyers offseason? You know, A to F scale. Start with you, Brad. I'd say a B plus. I mean, I think they, they drafted very well. Uh, they lost some guys, but you know, hopefully they get some guys back to, uh, you know, to to keep to keep the momentum going. Hopefully, you get something out of Couturier and uh, and Cam Atkinson, and and if you do, you know, then you can trade them and you can really, really get some get some uh, you know get get this rebuild going. You know, get get some of the money off the books, and then you know when you're getting the rebuild going, then you can go into free agency. And grab a couple of cornerstones to build a team around, and then you then you're yeah. that's how you get that's how you get there. That's that's kind right. of the uh, that's how most teams rebuild. You know, they they get they they stack up on a bunch of good young players, and then when they and and they get rid of all the money, and once they get rid of all the money, then they go in and they they spend new money and and try to grab a couple of cornerstone players that you know other teams can't afford and have to get rid of for salary cap reasons. That's how you do. It. That's how you get in there and do it. Sure, sure. Yeah, Brian. That's that's the key. I I'm with Brad. I gotta give him a B plus. Uh, just the leadership they brought in in the off season. That they had a phenomenal draft overall. Um, you know the future is bright for the Flyers, and I think we're gonna really see this team take the next step. Um, and real quick before we we jump over here, I forgot to mention. Um, Flyers loaned Sean Couturier to one of the teams in the KHL. So he's going to be playing for a little bit before he comes back over for camp. So he's going to he's gonna get huge. back in game shape. So that's, that's, that's huge. huge for the Flyers. Um, Knock off the I read that. Coach. I read that earlier today, too. Do you think that's maybe trying to establish better like relations in terms of some of the other draft picks? Maybe, maybe, maybe. 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 Mm -hmm. I, I almost thought it's... I almost thought it was a joke tweet. I was like, "Nah, <laughs> what? Yeah, it, really?" And I, I think I it's like, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a conditioning loan. Um, I think he's just going to play over there and get back in game shape and and make sure that he's good to go for training Coots, camp. Coots, leave your weed pen at home. Leave it at home. Don't bring that yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, don't bring any. Don't bring any illegal substances there. But yeah, don't do B, it. B plus. B plus. <laughs> Um, because Danny B was able to, you know, immediately come in and show why I deserve to be a general manager on the NHL level. And I mean, just hitting the ground running, right. I'm giving him and this whole organization an A plus because you got rid of Kevin Hayes and you got rid of Ivan Provorov and amongst other mistakes of the Chuck Fletcher era. And you really took control and made like a stamp of this is, this is, you know, you know what carrying the vision of Keith as well as uh, John Tortorello has been here already. You know, I, I like I like the moves, and it's only going to get finer from here. So, you ready to fire up the video and tell the good people about uh, Philly Sports Trip? Yeah, let's do it. We're going to hit that video first. We're going to take a quick little uh, 45, 42 second break here. Enjoy the clip. We'll be right back. 
Hey, Birds fans, the NFL schedule has arrived and Philly Sports Trips has all the details now. Visit the site phillysportstrips.com. This is sure to be an epic season. Be sure to go there now to make sure that you don't get shut out. Join us in Tampa, L.A., Seattle, or when we get revenge in Kansas City. Don't want to fly? No problem. Gather up your crew and hop aboard one of our signature boisterous bus trips to D.C. or New York. Sign up now and make sure to mention A. A2D. Don't miss out on the best Philly fan experience anywhere. Philly sports trip customers always stay at the best hotels and meet NFL legends. Book today. Thank you very much, Brian. You know, it's it's a tough, a tough transition for us here because we're so used to just continuing on, not taking commercial breaks. And, you know, as things develop and grow, we're going to have commercial breaks. So I'm all like, when do we fit it in? We want to tell the good people. It's a great opportunity. You should definitely jump on it, especially with football season right around the corner. So, um, yeah, there's been a lot of a lot of moves in the NHL overall this offseason, not just the Philadelphia Flyers, guys. Yeah, for sure. We've seen a lot of uh, – didn't expect the Bruins to be as active as they were. They didn't really go out and make any huge splashes, but – they were active. They, they, they. I think they were one of the teams that had made the most signings in the off season, um, especially day one. I think they, they sure. were the the most active. All right. Oh, for sure. But there's still there's still a few names that are left out there. Oh, there's yeah. there's quite a few names here. Actually, now that I'm actually looking at the list, I'm really surprised some of these guys haven't been picked up yet. And. We're going to kick this off. All right. So, like I explained to the boys here earlier in the show, so what I want to do here is I want to have a little game, and I want everybody to chime in, and I want definitely want everybody's opinion outside of the uh, two gentlemen on the air with me. And we're going to we're gonna start listening probably, I would say probably about 10 free agents, and I want I want to hear where everybody thinks they're going to go. Um, so we're gonna have we're gonna make a little game out of this. It's gonna be uh, just a little fun prediction game, just to see where everybody's heads at. And um, we're gonna kick things off. Technically, technically the top two free agents right now are Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taze, but their futures are unsure right now. So we're gonna move on to number three here. We're gonna go with Vladimir Tarasenko. We know the situation with um, him and the new. Uh, New agency that he's with kind of made the the deal in Carolina fall apart. So now he's he's available again. Um, where where does everybody think that he's going to wind up? Where's Vladimir Tarasenko going? Well, let's kick it off with Brad. I think he's going to go back to the Rangers. I think that I think that uh, the Rangers are still. They still have to sign Lafreniere, okay? But they haven't. He's the one guy that's left. They have three million dollars right on the button uh, left in, on the salary cap. You would have think you would think that they would have signed Lafreniere by now. I think that they're saving that money to see if they can get Tarasenko. Now, from what I've heard, Tarasenko is willing to take a small one-year deal. Because he's confident that next year he can he can uh, go out. There'll be more money. Everybody won't be quite quite as financially strapped, and kill it and get get himself another long term contract. Uh, that's 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 where I think he's going. I think he really loved it. His wife definitely wants to uh, stay there for sure. Um, you know, we'll see. I've heard I've heard a lot of rumors about Ottawa too. So. <laughs> So it's like she's high maintenance. <laughs> she oh, was to stay in New York. <laughs> Listen, Janet Janet Jones Janet Jones made a certain hockey player go to uh, L.A. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and uh, yeah. Sierra made a certain football player leave Seattle and go to Denver. So don't tell me these wives don't have any say in where these guys go. Okay, yeah. even even yeah. they even they know who the boss is. So just remember that. That's right. fair. That's fair, Robbie. Yeah, you know, I'm going to say a really good fit and a team that has enough money to make a play at Tarasenko. I'm going to say Carolina Hurricanes. You think they wind up getting the deal done again? 
I, th- I, I, I do think that the, Curr- the Hurricanes did check a lot of boxes for a team that makes a lot of sense for Tarasenko and free agency. You know, he's looking to be on a Stanley Cup contender. Well, they've been one of the best teams in the league for five years now. You know, they have the salary cap to work with. They're projected to have more than $24 million in cap space. Uh, I mean, they, it's mostly because you have veterans, Jordan Stahl, Stasny, uh, Jesper Foss, Derek Stefan, and Mac, Max Pacioretty. I think are all free agents all unrestricted free agents this offseason too. So, you know, if you're not inking all of them, I think you can make a play and put together money for a Tarasenko, who I think would be an upgrade. For sure. I could totally agree to that. Um, I can confirm Patch Reddy's been signed. I think just for oh. fast re-signed with Carolina. Um, oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, I could definitely see that. See, uh, I'm with you here, Rob. I think they figure out a way to get that Carolina deal done again. Um, there's a reason why he initially signed there in the first place. I think they're trying to figure out a way to make things work. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the holdup is. I don't know if it's just things going on with the with the, his new agency or, or maybe it's what Brad's saying. Maybe it's something with his wife. And they're just sitting here trying to, you know, work it out. But I, I ultimately, I think, I think they figure out there's, there's, like you said, there's there's a reason that they were checking boxes off. There's a reason they agreed to a deal to begin with. Um, so I, I think they they revisited. I I think Tarasenko winds up back in Carolina, um, on a similar deal that we saw before. Oh, you do see you do see that. I mean, it's a long shot for me, but I figured I'd be I'd be contrarian. But all right, yeah. What happens if Carlson goes to Carolina? Because that's also a rumor. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, true. Uh, and that's I can why see, I, uh, that's why I that's why I that's why I kind of threw Carolina out because right. I have a feeling that they're going to go. They're, they're, I have a feeling they have their hearts set on Carlson. Yeah, they might, and they very might might well indeed. I think Tarasenko can always pivot though because there's plenty of teams out there that'd be interested in them. I mean, oh, oh, you know, they, teams, Vegas yeah. Knights, Stars. I think they're they're in contention as well. I think half the league would like to have him. Yeah. Oh, for Who sure. Wouldn't. I just got to see real Buffalo quick. Buffalo wouldn't um, mind having them, I'm sure. Right. Buffalo could be a good fit. Go ahead, Saber. Go ahead, Saber. I agree that that's that could be a fit because Buffalo does have money. Um, I'm and just looking at Carolina. Better at leadership too. Uh, what, why is my cap suck on? What is going on? I'm falling apart over here. Um. Okay. All right, so the Hurricanes currently have two and a half million dollars in projected cap space, um, and obviously we we know that that Eric Carlson's gonna um, he's, he's gonna have a big contract coming with him. Um, as much as I think they are in on Eric Carlson, I don't, I'm not necessarily sure because he did sign Dimitri Olaf um, yeah, this offseason. Right. They Brought in Dylan Coglin as well. And then on top of it, you still have Jacob Slavin, Brent Burns, Brady Shea, Brett Pesci, and Jalen Chatfield kind of came out of nowhere and kind of started to show off his um his skill on, on the blue line. And I know they're really big on in him. Um but I mean, I'm looking at their at their roster and their cap space right now. I mean, they could probably make something work, but I don't know. You still got to, you got got to make sure you have room for Andre Sveshnikov. He's going to come off of the IR, right? Um, and do then they, he's going to start affecting too. Did they sign Pesci yet? Uh, Pesci is on a. I thought he was a restricted free agent. Next year. Oh, okay, okay. Next okay. year. So it's, yeah. So they're they're thinking about getting rid of him because they don't think they could pay him next year. Is that what it is? Yeah. Possibly, um, I've heard I've heard about him being uh, very much available right now. Yeah, I've heard him. I mean, Brady Shea, I'm sure is probably going to be available. I thought he had a decent year last year. Um, so one of those guys, I think, if they do make a move for Carlson, one of those guys is going back to San Jose. But I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Um, it, it also depends on term with with Tarasenko as well. I think that's going to affect. Yeah. 
um, a deal too. But I think Carolina, I agree, Rob. I think Carolina makes a lot of sense for Tarasenko at the moment. Yeah, I just think they ultimately get it done. You know, it's just a good fit. You know, the the money alone, you know, having that available helps. You know, but I mean, mm-hmm. there's there's lots of. I mean, I I can see him going back to the Rangers. I can see him going out west. A lot of good places for him to go. A ton of places. Um, right, I like the Canucks door kid, sixty six here. <laughs> Ottawa, that's too. great. Ottawa uh, too. Yeah, Ottawa's got money mm-hmm. to spend. Mm-hmm. Um, they could use a score and a leader like him. But uh, moving on. So number two on my list here, I got I got Matt Dumba, which I'm kind of a little surprised that he uh, he's still available. I mean, so relatively young defenseman on the blue line could be a really good second pairing defenseman for somebody coming off of a contract where he was making a cap hit of six mil a year. Um, he's probably going to be in that same ballpark again in his new contract. Um, the only team that I heard linked to him thus far was Anaheim, and they kicked the tires on signing him. I think they went with Gudis instead, which I personally would prefer. Um, so we're going to start with you this time, Rob, Matt Dumba, where, where do we feel like Matt Dumba is going to be able to fit in? That's why I held off saying this suggestion for Tarasenko. I think he, he winds up at Dallas star. I think he makes the, they, their stars are showing interest in him, and it makes a, you know, a lot of sense for, you know, you know, if the stars can find a way to, to add Dumba, it just significantly upgrades to the, it makes an upgrade to their defense. You know, and that's, I think, what, you know, befell them, you know, or, or sort of, you know, uh, what's the word, you know, really, you know, came up back to bite them in this year's playoffs in terms of making an even deeper run. But, you know, he also had four goals and 10 assists in 79 games, so he contributes there a little bit as well from the blue line. I just think Dow should be motivated enough to make the room for Dumba, and when that happens, he'll be changing teams uh, for the first time in his NHL career, which is interesting. He's been a wild his whole career. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, crazy thing about it, isn't it? It is. You don't see that too often. But no, I mean, not at you, all. you may not see it anymore. <laughs> nah. Brad, where do you see Dumbo fitting in? Okay, now nobody's ever mentioned this team, but I have a weird feeling that we have not heard a lot from Seattle at all. Ooh. Okay, but Seattle is an outstanding defensive hockey team. Okay, yeah. why not add yet another really good, solid defenseman to this team? Okay, the only way that they're going to get past teams like Edmonton and Dallas, who have way more scoring than them, is to just load up and be a great defensive team and, and try to win on counterattacks. Now, the guy, the guy is pretty good at clearing the zone you know he, he he's good with the breakout pass and he's very good defensively i mean and he's physical this he would be a good fit there you know there or los angeles great just yeah, I, I think that, los angeles would be a good fit too yeah those those are the two teams but seattle don't don't discount seattle seattle has not really done that much in the off season but they're going to do something yeah, they're going to make a splash. They're going to, they're going to want the whole world to remember who the heck the Seattle Kraken are. So they got Scott's face to do it too. Yep. Yeah, and Dumba sort of fits you know what they're building there too. I like that fit. It's a good suggestion. Yeah, yeah. I haven't heard anything about it. I just yeah. it's just just off the top of my head of, of a guy of, of you know not not the most not not where there's any rumors towards it. I think L.A. would be a good fit too. I think that right. might be that might be an even better fit. I don't know what the Kings cap space situation is though. But I know yeah, Seattle so has money to burn. They and do. He would fit into that team very well. I actually wasn't gonna go to Seattle, but I think you kind of swayed me to, to to pick Seattle here for Dumba. Um we got Anthony chiming in saying um Dallas. Another team I thought of, and, and Mike was saying this, was uh, Ottawa. I think Ottawa could could use uh, mm-hmm. the services of Matt Dumba. Um, they are a relatively young defense over there, so they could use a little bit of his leadership. Um, but, I mean, Chikrin, Tomas Shabbat, 
That's your pairing. That's your number one pairing right there. And you're not bringing in Dumba to be a, a top pairing guy anyway. He's he's more of a second pairing guy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like I like the suggestions. I like Seattle even more than where I was originally going to go. Um, and I was originally going to go Edmonton, although they don't really have a ton of money. But I figured they they were going to figure a way to to make this work, even if it's on like a prove it deal. Yeah, they got um, the need. They have the need, yeah, and they actually do have some money to burn. They, so maybe they could they get trade, it done. Suppose they do actually trade Ryan Nugent Hopkins, which they've been talking about for years. Then they could fit him in. Yeah, I mean they could probably fit him in now. He's they got about five and a half million uh, in cap space, so they could be able oh, to. They could, fit, they could fit him easily. Then he would be a mm-hmm. good fit in that too. And mm-hmm. then if you lose Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who has a full no movement clause, how many guys? I thought you can only have a limited number of guys with no movement clauses. Man, anyway, you can sign your whole team to no movement. It's a stupid thing to do, but I agree. You know, They're top it always five. Bites you, it always bites you in the ass when you do that. Mm. Their top six guys on on their their roster here have uh, no movement clauses. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, you'd be giving up five point one two five million. Over the next two, uh, oh my gosh, over the next six years. So you're going to free up a lot of money if you do decide to move uh, Nugent Hopkins. But uh, they need defensive help. We've been saying this for years. I think Dumba Dumba would be a good fit for Edmonton. I think 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 money-wise, as far as Nugent Hopkins is concerned, He's a good he that's that's a solid that's a solid guy. I mean, mm-hmm. You're gonna get 60, 70 points a year, you know, for, for for a very good center. That's how many of those are actually available? It's a fair point. You know, and he's not getting paid he's not getting paid ten million a year. No so five million a year. Not. What is he getting paid? Five million a year? Six million uh, a year? Dumbo is six. What are you talking about, yeah, Nugent? I mean, Nugent Hopkins. Uh, yeah, he's just over five. Just so that's that's a that's a good deal. It's a bargain. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I think he, I think the, I think they. I mean, I don't know if he waive his no trade. That's that's the that's that's the problem. But yeah. I mean, if he went to another, if he went to a, a team that was good that had a chance to win. He probably would. But you know, you're not going to trade him to Winnipeg. That's for sure. Well, <laughs> no. You know, I mean, right, in 2017, 2018, in, in 82 games, he posted 14 goals and 50 points. So, I mean, he can make a, a, a you know effect on the score sheet, but mostly his value, I think, is on the penalty kill, you know, as well as, you know, like playing premium defense. And that's two things that would be helpful here. Yeah, for sure. Um, but we're going to move on to the next one here. Um, so we got the next <laughs> – Next guy up here is a, a familiar face. I like Noah Hannafin. Is he bad? I thought he was good. He helped me he, win a fantasy championship. I don't know. I like he's him. just not a top pairing guy, and that's kind of where Calgary has well, him right now. Gotcha. Um, but the next guy we're we're pretty all we three of us are pretty familiar with. Uh, Tony D'Angelo, who is now a free agent after being bought out by the Flyers. Uh, what was it? Late last week. Yep. Where, where do we see uh, Tony D going? Where, where, who would have uh, the most interest in bringing him back? Hmm. Yeah, well, it's a good style of game. I think there's gonna be a lot of teams in the market. I mean, what about St. Louis Blues? Possibly. Okay, so I got. Um, Blues would be yeah, that would be a good fit. Blues, Blues would be a good fit, and you said uh, Panthers, uh, yeah. Brad. Yeah. Only problem I have with the Panthers is they've already gone out and and brought in a couple D men. Um, they brought in Ol- Oliver Ekman Larson, and they brought in somebody else. I can't remember who they brought in, but they've already addressed that. But but, but Tony can quarterback your power play. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, here's a good one. Kind of Montreal Canadiens. That could be a good fit too. 
Oh, I don't. I'm kind of feeling with sharks. I don't fan. see him in Montreal at all. Oh, that no. would. Be bad. No. No, you know how you know how, what Tony D'Angelo's personality is like. Oh yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, he's, 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 I don't know that he could handle uh, handle French Canadians all day. That, that <laughs> I'm know. just looking at their. The, they probably have one of the biggest defensive needs in the whole league, and um, yeah, but and, he's not a good money to spend. He's not a good defense. He's not a good defenseman, but he can really run a power play though. Yeah, true, true. I like Pittsburgh. I think that could be a good fit for Tony. He yeah. stays relatively in the area near his family and friends, and he gets to face the uh, Flyers a few times a year, and he gets to face the Rangers a few times a year. So, what about Washington? Washington uh, yeah. could be a good fit. Washington could be a good fit because they need a fairly young defenseman. That's a team that needs to get a little bit younger. You see what their cap space looks like because I think Washington could be a really good fit. Spell it you know, right. I don't know, John, John Carlson, can he? Can he? You think he could still be a the, the the quarterback for their power play? I think so. After the injury he had last year, they want him to be. Mm. They may want to. They may want to like reduce his ice time a little bit. Uh, Washington is not an option. No. No, they no are money. actually in the red. Oh jeez. Mm. Good, good. Let him be in the red. Yeah, let him. They deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> what about San Jose? Out west, send him out west. I've heard Anaheim linked to him. Like I think it was from somebody in yeah in this chat. I need um, to Seattle. That's not a bad idea either. That's not a bad idea. No, I like that too. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Dylan saying Carolina, but if Carolina is in on Carlson, I take Carlson all day over Tony D'Angelo. Yeah, absolutely. But he's a poor man's he's a poor man's Carlson, sort of speak, so to speak. Yeah, Dylan says Boston's going to trade one of their defensemen. They have too many, and they just brought in another one, and Kevin Shattenkirk. Um, yeah, but he's. I don't. I don't see him being a. Uh, I see him being like the seventh defenseman, on that team, though. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, he, I think I, I think he's going to spend uh, he's going to be spending a lot of time with Jack Edwards and uh, and company and and uh, Dale Arnold in Boston instead of uh, instead of on the ice. He, he's probably going to do the last thing I wanted. I would want to do as an NHL player spend any time with Jack Edwards because he's a horrible person. Uh, yeah, we know that we've we've all heard him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I, I'm saying that I'm saying I'm saying that to Tony D'Angelo because he deserves to have to listen to him for 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 every game. That would be hilarious. Fair enough. Okay, I like it. <laughs> I like it. Um, Castle clear, clear cap space by trading Kuznetsov and Mantha. I know they're going to trade Kuznetsov, but I mean, right now, like I said, they're in the red, so I don't necessarily know. You see Kuznetsov. He's already requested the trade. So he's only got two years left on this contract, and they're going to clear a lot of money with him. He's at a $7.8 million cap hit. Mantha no, is probably going to be. They're going to have to, they're going to have to, uh, they're going to have to retain money on that, on him. Um, Nobody's going to pay that for him. More than likely, yeah. They are already retaining. Uh, I don't think they're retaining anybody, honestly. Uh, not from what I'm seeing here. If, if I if I were if I was the Rangers and I wanted to get him, not that I do, but if I wanted to get him, I would say Washington would have to keep two two million eight hundred thousand. I wouldn't pay more than five million for that guy at this point in his career. He's just he's just a weirdo, that guy. Yeah. He's always complaining about something. I yeah, guess to play with Alex. That guy, guy gets to play with Alex Govechkin and 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 all those great players, and he's always complaining about something. Yeah, he's a prima donna. I have no interest in bringing him into Anaheim as much as he's nah, he's a really you know, good offensive player. Anthony Mantha is going to free up some money too. He's got one year left. I think he's going to be more of a trade deadline 
deal. Anthony Mantha, I think Kuznetsov, he wants out as soon as he can get out. Anthony Mantha would be a very – they could get something for him. I agree. He's they 28 years old. Yep. Um, they'll probably have to eat a little bit of his salary too. He's at 5.7, but he plays – he can play both both wing positions. So that's huge. That that'll, that makes him a little bit more versatile. Yeah, he's like a top six, top nine player. Yeah. But he's, he's um, very solid. Yeah, Mighty Ducks for life. All they got to do, they're only 700 and some odd dollars un, under the cap or over the cap. Really, just either trade Mantha or Kuznetsov, and they freed up some money, and they'll have a little bit more to play with. But obviously, uh, clear. Um, I mean, I know they want to trade Kuznetsov, but I didn't realize they want to trade Mantha too. But it makes sense. Um, all right, so we're gonna I'm, as soon as Rob pops back up here, we'll. Uh, I like Dylan's comment. That's a good one. Oh, Dylan's great. I love Dylan's that's, comments. That's a, that's a good one. Jacob Parks, you complain to a Tommy Let's a goal in. Reminds you of Belchy from Goon. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's true. It's yeah, true, though. He does. He does. He does. Speaking of goalies, did you hear uh, Kiprasov is being uh, going to have his n- number retired in uh, Calgary? I did, and it's well-deserved. I'm waiting to hear Anaheim say they're going to do the same thing to um... – Jurassic Air. I mean, he was great. He was great with the Flames. Probably one of the most mm-hmm. most underrated goalies of all time. I mean, that guy's got more shutouts than Henrik Lundqvist does. Mm-hmm. He was he was so loved in that and in, in that organization too as as a person. He's did a lot for that community. He did a lot for. Um, the organization he brought glory to that organization and the one thing i'm never going to forget is his little mini me that he used to do used to have when he would uh warm up where the kid would be dressed head to toe just like kipper yeah right behind and yeah he right would behind mimic him right behind yes. him yes. and he would just yes. mimic him the whole time all right moving on now that robbie's back um so one that i'm actually a little surprised he's still available as well um he was just traded from the New York Islanders to the Chicago Blackhawks and then released by the uh, – bought out by the Blackhawks, and that's Josh Bailey. Yeah. Um, he's a guy that I'm, I'm incredibly surprised at, that he's still available. Um, and I haven't heard anybody linked to him, which is really interesting. Um, so I'm going to start back with you, Robbie, again. Where do you think Josh Bailey winds up? A couple options, you know, that be in, in, in I, I still think Josh Bailey can be a, a you know, a, a contributing player, you know, a strong center iceman for a team that's deficient in that. I mean, he is a little longer in his youth now at 33 years of age, but, you know, I think right away I immediately go to the Coyotes. They could use a center iceman, you know, and you could, like, you know, that, like, that's an easy, like, you know, you know, eating salary type of landing spot um but maybe even a little bit more of a competitive uh landing spot i think you know i'm gonna have to disagree with you from before brian i think the sabers could use a center iceman especially a bottom six one to help support yeah i mean they're a relatively young team who were we talking about before? Sorry, I have so much things going on in my head. Arizona, possibly, was my first suggestion. Um, but Buffalo Sabres. Yeah, you got Tage. You have um, you have Casey Middlestat. I'm trying to think who else they have at center. I mean, you bring in a guy like Josh Bailey, you're you're improving this team. Um not just because of his his uh, scoring ability, which you know he's coming off a season where he played sixty four games. He only had twenty five points, but you know he right. was he was not healthy for a lot of this season. Right. Uh, but this is this is a guy who brings a lot of leadership, and he does have offensive upside. 
Wait, am I looking at the right guy? I think also before you're talking right about the center iceman of the Sabres, Dylan Cousins, you know, he's involved in that discussion mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. Mm -hmm. But Dylan you get, uh, yes. Yeah. But, but, you, but I mean, think about the, the maturation that Cousins could get by playing with a player like Josh Bailey has been there, done that. Yeah. And that's, I think that's a, a, a good reason for a team like Buffalo to bring a guy like that in because, you know, the fact that he's been there before, he's a voice of experience. You know, he he knows how to keep some of these other guys a little bit calmer. Um, yeah, Dylan's listing them off for me here. So it's uh, Tage, Middlestat, Cousins, and Yost. Um, yeah, maybe you bring in Josh Bailey to be your fourth line center. You can always move Yost to the wing because he can play the wing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I think Buffalo could be a really good fit for Bailey, and on top of it you're staying relatively in the same area. So mm -hmm. that could be a good fit. Goathead is saying uh, Bailey to Colorado. No. He's also saying uh, Yotes, New Jersey, or Columbus. I guess yeah. My, just stole I like my thunder. Jersey, possibly. Yeah. Just stole my thunder. I, I like New Jersey to get him. Or Detroit. Yeah, I think Detroit uh, could Detroit. really Detroit could really use a veteran a veteran center like him. That's mm -hmm. a good one. That's a good one. Um, referring to Josh Bailey, Dylan also thinks that he could get a PTO from a young team, which I could see that. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, so Avant Garde says, "Why would you predict or better want them to not be a top?" 10 pick team or bubble for the playoffs. You want a top five? Pick? Oh, reverse psychology is, is really what I was getting at. Um, Cause every time that I predict that they're going to be good, they wind up being bad. And every time I predict that they're going to be bad, they always wind up being good. So it's kind of mm -hmm. a little bit of reverse psychology there. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't mind them struggling a little bit and continuing getting some top draft picks in the meantime. <laughs> True. Absolutely. Um, Minnesota's not a bad – you're right, Anthony. That's that's not a bad one. No, that's not a bad one at all because they're not really incredibly deep down center. Uh, I think their number one centerman is yep. Sam Steele, I believe. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, a, that's probably their only need. Besides D, yeah. like a uh, like, uh, D, well, D, yeah. Yeah, they're just getting a little old on D. Their D mm -hmm. at one point was really, really good, uh, but they're just getting a little bit older. All right, moving this little train along here. So Detroit from Brad, Buffalo from Rob. I agree with Buffalo. Um, I originally didn't agree, but I, I – with it being Josh Bailey, he's probably going to be a fourth liner, and you can always move Tyson Yost over to the wing. So that could be a really, really good fit. I, I also do like Detroit as well. I think that could be a really good fit. Um, Coyotes option, yep. Yeah, yep, yep. Um, all right, so Thomas Tatar coming off the uh, coming off the Devils here. I believe this is number five. Um, what were his numbers last year? Thomas Tatar? Yeah. Give me one second here. Oh boy. Omas Tatar is coming off a forty eight point season in eighty two games. So he went twenty goals, twenty eight assists. He had a plus forty one. He was thirty nine percent. I wouldn't mind seeing him on the. I wouldn't mind seeing him on the Rangers. Jeez. <laughs> well. I didn't feel like that was going to come. <laughs> they, they don't have. They, they don't have. They don't have the money to get him. But, jeez, that that's pretty good. I didn't realize he uh, he scored that many goals. I didn't either. I mean, wow. we. We know his offensive ability now, apparently, but we also know that he was always a really good um, defensive player as well, a really strong two-way player. 
Um, we knew about his offensive upside, and, and we see it here. You know, he's multiple 20-point, 20 uh, 20-goal 20 seasons. He had one year with Detroit where he almost broke 30. Um, where do we – Could he Brad, go back to Detroit? I think he could go back. He hasn't been there since 27, 2018. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a chance he stays with the Devils, too. That could be a problem, though, Rob, because mm-hmm. they just signed Timo Meyer. They may not have. Oh, they, they, oh, they got one too much. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, they may not be able to uh, right. afford to bring him in. I mean, you know the Devils right. with the money. They, oh, sure. they, they can't go all the way up to the salary cap because they just can't afford to. Right. You know, there's a salary cap, and then there's the devil's salary cap. They're well, always a little, a little different. I still have Buffalo's salary cap up from the past guy. You know, six point seven mil. Maybe they go after Tatar too and make two improvements at center ice end day, back to back on your list, Brian. Buffalo would be a nice Let's place for that. them. Wouldn't be a bad place to go for the. I'll tell you what, he wouldn't be a bad fit with the Flyers either, to be quite honest with you. I, I know yeah. they probably couldn't afford him, but he'd be a nice right. fit there. No, and he's familiar with the Metro now after spending the last two years with the Devils, too. So, Yep. 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 I think those young players could benefit from from a guy like that who's uh, who's who's been playing a while and has scored a lot of, a lot of goals and has had a lot of points in the league. You know, and, yeah, he, and he's... And he can skate, so he speed wise he'd fit in. Because the Flyers definitely are going to be a, a faster team, if anything, next year. I th- I think that he winds up. I think he could potentially wind up in Columbus, mm-hmm. um, as a middle six guy, second line center. Um, you know they need offense. They need. Uh, some older players, some leadership in in that um, in that locker room as well. I think Tatar could be a good fit for the Columbus Blue Jackets, and they got plenty of money to spend. Tatar retired. Tatar is retired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got I got a place for him. You guys aren't gonna like it, but. Pittsburgh. Yeah, that could be. But they're no, they're tight on money too, though. They yeah, got money. I know, I know. But they, but you know what? He he might go to for a chance to uh, play with Crosby. Mm. Take a little discount. Right. I mean, wouldn't you? I yeah. mean, I know you guys. We all we all hate Crosby, but let's be honest. Yeah, they got to figure out a way to shed two million dollars, though. Yeah, I mean, but Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh is also wants to be in on uh, on Carlson too. I don't know how they how they expect to make that happen, but yeah, right. Malkin's got to go the other way. <laughs> I think it's the only way they can make that work. Right. Yeah. Well, if I'm I'm if I'm San Jose, I am not doing that. I mean, you have control of Malkin for three years. I mean, the only downside to Malkin is that he's 36, but he's still he's still a really, really productive player. Yeah, but he's old. They they, they have to get they have to get younger. They've already got a couple of old players still. I mean, they yeah, still have they Hurdle, can. who they're paying a ton of money to, also. Um, Hurdle's not that old. He's not. Hang on. Um, Are pulling you up sure? Her. Yeah. Tomas Hurdle is. He's got to be over 30. 29. 29. Okay. The only problem I have with Hurdle, though, is his knee. You know, yeah. He always seems right. to have issues with that knee. Yeah. Okay. We're going to do one more here. So I like Columbus. Brad's pretty much all over the Metro, which is perfectly all right. Um, <laughs> and then Robbie was in a couple of different places for Tartar as well. But I think ultimately. You know, I think he goes to Buffalo as well. You know, nice winger and center iceman to balance out that team. Love it. Yep. Love it. 
Um, all right, let me just confirm that this guy is still a free agent because I'm not 100% sure that he is still a free agent. So just give me one moment here. Deals real quick. happening all the time. Not surprised. Got to confirm this. You're damn right, especially with this player. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes. Okay, so he is unsigned. Um. So the final guy we're going to talk about here and predict where he's going to go is Jonas Donskoy. Um, solid depth player. He's 31 years old, and he's coming off the contract with the. I think I want to say it was Colorado. For some reason, it's not coming up on here. Um, with his contract history, uh, Seattle. I thought it was Seattle. You're right, because he was picked up in the uh, right the uh, expansion draft. Why is that not coming? Oh, because I didn't scroll down enough. Hey, that usually works. Hey, way to go, Bri. You suck. Um, you don't suck. You're ah. terrible, Bri. You suck. Um, no, uh, so Jonas Donskoy, good, good role player, good depth player. Uh, where, where, where do we think Jonas is going? You know, I, I forgot about this, and I'm looking this up, and I'll be honest with you. I, it just reminded me on the search here. He's um, battling uh, severe concussion symptoms, so I think they're waiting for those to clear up. Like, there's some talk that his career might actually be over. Oh, boy. We're going to have to yeah. reroute all this off then. <laughs> yeah, but that, I mean, that was back in January, though. So I don't, you know what I mean? Like, that's, but like, I don't know if things have cleared up since then. That's the that's, one thing I don't know. If, that's true. But I still don't want to end on a guy like play, that. Where do you think he ends up? It's tough, you know, because, I mean, in terms of, like, you know, what teams would be willing to take, like, that speculation. I, You know what? Arizona. <laughs> I was going to say the other team, Blackhawks. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same thing where they can add that to their books to hit that floor, and if he, had, and if he has to be on, like, um, long-term IR on account of the concussion symptoms, I mean – like, like I said, those were reports back in January. I mean, we're in July right now. So, I mean, I haven't had an update c conclusively, but you often don't get that in the offseason anyway. Um, I think that the Blackhawks could be a team that, okay, that we can put him on our long term and, and still have him as a piece, you know, to help, you know, remold that team. Uh, yeah, they could do that. Or Flyers, yeah. I like that, man. Mike can't talk tonight either. It's all right. <laughs> um, it's there's something in the water or something. I don't know. I could see him going back to Seattle. Honestly, um, I thought he was a really good fit for the Kraken. I mean, his offensive production wasn't there, but you know, he's he's still a solid player. He's a good depth player. He plays a little bit of a physical game as well. I think that's something that could be very beneficial for um, the Kraken. Because that's something that they were lacking a little bit. Um, he's very responsible um, for the most part on the defensive side, too. I mean, yeah, he's a minus 10. But if you look at most of his career, uh, his two years with the San Jose Sharks combined, he's a plus 20. And he was a plus 16 in his two years in Colorado. Um, so you can't really put that all on him. Um, I'm sure that there were definitely some plays where the defense um, definitely failed. But. For the most part, a really reliable two-way player, strong penalty killer. Um, I, if he does decide to play again, I think he re-ups with Seattle. I can dig it. All right, that's really all I got for you boys. I was I wanted to try and go ten, but the conversation went a little bit more than I thought it was going to. Besides. There's really no other really intriguing names on this list. You got Paul Byron, Anton Kenobin, Pui Sutter, Jesse Puglia Harvey. Uh, Richard Panic is apparently still playing. He's 103. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
No, um, that's cool, man. That's that that that's that's the, that's the meat of them for sure. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, and that's always good when the, when you know we take the conversation to the next level with the you know commenters giving in their uh, their opinions. We thank you for that uh, as always. Bringing you the third period is fan up. It's the best way to enjoy fantasy sports daily MLB contest and NFL, NBA, and NHL. Right around the corner, win great prizes. Sign up today. Use promo code A two D for five thousand bonus points, a fifty dollar value value at fanup dot app. Shootout time, boys! Man, I've been dying all show to get to the shootout because these are really some creative little bangers here for your really quick rapid fire reaction to these questions. So I'm gonna fire them off. Whoever wants to jump in, jump in. Best locker room victory song. You got to go something loud. You got to go something kind of poppy. Got to go something fast paced. Are you talking about like the gold songs after the after team school? Locker room victory songs. Jump in the locker, in the locker room. room. Mm-hmm. Because the goal song's coming next. Put a thumbtack in that. Okay. Yeah, definitely put a thumbtack in that. I don't know any of those songs, to be quite honest with you. Oh no, this is this is uh, what 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 do you think would be what would be your victory song in the locker room? Like what what song would, oh, is your go to? Okay. Like what would you oh, put okay. on immediately? Got it. All right. Me metal Mike is going with Pantera. Me metal Mike is gonna love my suggestion. Maybe not. It might be a little tame for the Pantera. I can go. I can go so many different ways. Is that Dallas Stars do Pantera? Nice, nice. I think. Nice. Like my my song that I I use right now to get amped up for anything I'm doing right now is Blink 182's Edging. So I would mm. probably rock with that song. Nice. Nice. I'll tell you the one I used or we listened to when I went to high school. Master of Puppets, Metallica. Always. Yes. Yeah, that's always a good always. one. I would go as soon as you walked in. If I survive. Or... Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yes. I fucking love it. I yes. love it. And then have a picture of Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Little little shrine in the locker. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> or Rocky, whichever one, whichever one you'd rather have. Have a picture of Sylvester Stallone in there. Yeah, can't go wrong with that. Have them both from Rocky Three. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, shootout number two. Pick a goal song. I mean, for me, there's only one that should forever be the Flyers' goal song, and that's the Dupe song. Yeah, because Anaheim still uses it. The song by Pennywise. Because to me, that's that's the song, that's yeah. the goal song. Nah, you know, I looked it up today. The actual name of the Dupe song is Maria. I like it loud. By Scooter. Okay, but but, I but then it, in parentheses it's doop, doop 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 doop. <laughs> oh yeah, that's not the song I was thinking of. Pennywise is uh, bro bro him. That's that for yeah. me is a goal a great goal song. You can't really go for wrong sure. with. There's a few WWE themes that make really good uh, goal songs. Um, Obviously, Becky Lynch with the Flyers this year. I yeah. thought her goal song, uh, her her music works really well as a goal song. It does, but bring back the dupe. <laughs> um, there was another one. It gets overplayed when you listen to it too much. You're like, all right, it's turning heel. Hmm. Well, she's fortunately face again. So, Is and she? breaking, yeah, she broke Trish Stratus's face. Oh. That's been a little fun little rivalry. I'm not going to lie. Um, what the hell other song was I thinking of? Hmm. 
You don't know. I don't know either. I had it on the tip of my tongue, and now it's gone. Um, and it stinks because a lot of my my playlists on my phone right now are all country music. Nice. It's yeah. country music myself lately. It's not bad. No, it's it's really not, especially the new stuff these days. I really like the new stuff these days. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it was a song by a band called Skylet Drive. I'm pretty sure Me Metal Mike might know him. Um, I'm I know for sure Dylan knows him. Um, what's up, Joe? Joe's chiming in. Joe's finally joining us. Hello, brother. Hey, Joe. Uh, Shriveled and to the left. <laughs> it's cold in here, so it's like up in my gut. Um, Hell's Bells is a good one. Yeah. ACDC's Hell's, Be- Hell's Bells. Yeah. How about that song by Kiss? I want to rock and roll one night. That would be a good one. Absolutely. That'd be a good one. Um, Trooper by Iron Maiden would be a good one. Yeah, I don't know what, what song it is. Um, but Paranoid, yeah, I would by, Paranoid by Black Sabbath. That would be a really good one, too. Yeah, that would I work. Think, that, that, that would sound that A lot of teams use that, use that to... Uh, before face-offs, yeah. that's the problem. I I forgot about yeah. that. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I hear that song every day on the, uh, on the, what is it? It's a WMGK. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm with I'm with Joe like on that. this one. Bro, him by Pennywise has got to be the best. It's it's the goal. It, that that's the one I would, I'd be rocking with forever. Boo! <laughs> it's Dope. Actually, it's Dope. Dope. <laughs> It's Anaheim's goal song too, which is actually really awesome. Yeah, no, it's pretty, it's a good song. I like it. Though, yeah. I'm just kidding. Oh, I know. No worries. Do. <laughs> That's all I got. That's all I can all right. really think of. All right, shootout number three. Favorite Marvel movie. Love it. Love you bringing the movie. Question. Brad, have you seen any of them? No. Oh, I was hoping you did. No. Sorry. I'll agree right, with Rob. whatever you say, though. <laughs> because because Rob, the great, you remember, I'm, one, Mr. Sw- I'm Mr. Switzerland, so I'm neutral. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it's Civil War. Uh, well, mm. Actually, no, it's Winter Soldier. For me, it's Winter Soldier. I think that's the best one, hands down. Um, really? Wow. Yeah, just the action sequences are really good. I love the story behind it. You got that mixture of, yes, it's a comic book movie, but you got that James Bond vibe from it um, as well. And just that just that, that reveal when, when Captain America figures out who the Winter Soldier is, and you're just kind of like, it just there's just everything about that movie has has is amazing to me and and just top to bottom the movie's great there's a lot you can argue i i almost went with civil war like i love civil war um but for me yeah it's winter soldier gotcha gotcha no it's a, that, that, one be one that would think you'd say but but a very good movie nonetheless. For me, um, I just I love the multiverse element, and I'm so eager. I haven't had an opportunity uh, to see the new Flash movie with uh, Keaton back as Batman, um, mm-hmm. but it has that same element in terms of the Marvel universe. And for me, it's Spider Man No Way Home. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, believe it or not, I didn't like the first two Spider Man movies, but I did enjoy that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was just a nice short. It was an awesome story, and like it was just very, very cool concept to have all three of them together like that. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was really, really well done, and to build off of basically Spider Man Two the way they did, and right. really start to really explain and get into the multiverse. I thought it was really good. I thought the, um, I thought the uh, the new 
Doctor Strange movie was good in a lot of ways, but it was also garbage in a lot of ways as well. Um, the multiverse, like actually getting to see a little bit more of the multiverse, I thought was really cool aspect of the movie. Mm-hmm. But all in all, I just thought that they just that was poor writing on on Marvel's part on that one, right? Um, but yeah, like my top five consists of Winter Soldier, Civil War, End Game, Infinity War, and probably the original Iron Man movie. I think that's my top five. Nice, 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 nice. What's ironic is that you could probably see, um, uh, yeah, I'd be willing to bet. I'm, I have, you know, self admission, I've never been to Disney World, never been, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna contact at, at some point in the near future. I'm gonna contact Alonzi Travel. You know, because they specialize in creating the vacation of your dreams at Disney, Universal, or wherever your heart calls you. If you want to join me at Disney, you know, let their talented team of travel experts create a custom vacation for you without any of the stress. Tell them HD Radio sent you. Alonze, let's go. They're at alonzetravel.com backslash take the trip. I'm sure you can check out a lot of, like, Marvel-influenced rides at Disney World. I'm on the bet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they got a bunch. They got a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. They have a bunch. And this is just off the top of my head. But if you really want to get some in-depth, you got to go to Chuck's and you got to go to to Andy. Both guys are travel agents for Alonze Travel. Both guys work for A2D Radio. Very easy to get in touch with them. They'll help you out. They'll They'll plan everything for you, and they'll let you know what rides are there. They're there constantly. They're there even... They're there just about as much as Chrome is, and Chrome's always down there. I don't know how, but I, I need to do whatever those guys are doing to be able to get to Florida as often as they are. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Seriously, every time I feel like I'm signing on to Facebook and looking at stuff, one of those guys is just like, all right, um, I'm back in Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just left, fellas, like. Doing it right, doing it right with yeah. Alonze. Doing it right. The Jealousy. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie has been horrible. Oh, that's always disappointing. I'm not excited for the new one. I'm gonna see it, but I'm not excited. Like the animation looks kind of trashy. It reminds me of the new Spider-Man movies, um, the new animated ones that they did, the multi <laughs> multiverse ones. But. We'll see. They got a lot more yeah. villains. They're introducing Bebop Rocksteady. They got uh, Leatherhead. They have um, Mondo Gecko. They have a bunch of the old school um, villains in, in this okay. movie. So we'll see how this works out. Fingers crossed, right? For the Ninja Turtles, Fingers. always. Fingers crossed. All right, boys, let's wrap this up. It's been fun. It's been fun. Hopefully we'll get Maddie back next week. It'd be good to see him. I wonder if he's tan. Does he get tan? He's tan. I don't know. I think he's sunburnt. He's sunburnt. I think he's going to be bright red. (laughs) I think he's going to be bright red when we see him next week. How long has he been down there? About a week. Maybe a week and a half. About that. Yeah, he missed two shows. First sunburn. The first sunburn probably peeled off, and he probably got tan now. What if, he, what if he comes back? What if he does come back and he's tanner than all of us combined? Like, what do we do? <laughs> Curse his name. <laughs> well, it, it's hard to get tanner than me because I, you know, I got the beach in my backyard. So yeah, you do. So I mean, I just sneak over there for an hour and I'm good. Well, you know. paint a rose on your nose. Yeah. Not yeah. all of us can live on the beach, Brad. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> too much too much tan though. Now I go to now I have to go to a dermatologist all the time. So God punishes me for for, for for that. So if that's what you want to call a punishment, just going to the dermatologist. Yes. Meanwhile, you live on the beach. Yeah. You lucky, lucky bastard. I, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just jealous because that's my place of Zen and I never go there. Place of Zen. <laughs> It is. This my place is in. It's where my I get my peace of mind. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is nice to just zone out. For sure. I'm about to go zone out now. 
Yes, me too. Go to La La Land. Definitely. Mm -hmm. definitely. You know, if I turn on the Yankees, I'll I'll fall asleep a lot faster. (laughs) (laughs) I hear you. Hey, the Mets had to hold on against Chicago White Sox. It could always be worse, Brad. Trust me. Yeah, they're they're losing to the Angels again. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. Just pitiful. Uh, Brighter days ahead. Brighter days ahead. But anyway... Thanks okay. for joining us. Thanks for you all for the great comments in the uh, in the chat. Always. Good night, folks. It's been real. It's been fun. It's it's been real fun for Brian, for Brad. I'm Rob, Maddie. Come back next week, please. I'm terrible at leading us out of shows. Peace. <laughs>